Well, 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 what do we have here? If you've already read the title and thumbnail of the video, you know we're looking at Krita on Android. It just came out today. I got some tweets I woke up to this morning and I thought, wow, I, I need to check this out. First, a disclaimer, this is not a, a full review. I don't feel like I'm really equipped to do a review for a couple reasons. One, I've only been using it for a little over an hour, and so I wanted to give my first impressions here. And two, I'm not a hardcore Krita user. I've used it in some videos, I've painted with it before, but it's not my everyday painting program. I tend to stick to Procreate and, and Photoshop and that sort of thing. So I don't know every single feature that exists in Krita, so I can't speak to whether all of those features are here or not, what I have been able to tell in the time that I've been using it is that everything that I've used before in Krita is here, and that's really impressive. All right, so first things first, this is full Krita. It is free. It is a beta version. It's more stable than I expected the beta to be, especially since this is the first version of the public beta that's been available. I'm going to link this down below, so if you want to install it on Android, you can go to the Google Play Store and do that. All right, so when you first boot up Krita, this is what you're going to see. It looks like Krita on the desktop. You can go, you can create it. Everything is here. This is a pro level app on Android, which is why this is a big deal. Android hasn't had something this detailed yet in the art space. And so the fact that they've ported it over is really impressive. And the fact that this beta is so stable at this point is really impressive. I'm not sure if all of this stuff is working. You know, for example, you can go in here and change your color space or your depth and your color profile and that sort of thing. Obviously, you can create different size documents. That's working. I'm just going to go with the default for now. There aren't a ton of touch gestures, but you can uh, pinch to zoom and do that basic stuff. If you want to undo, you're still going to have to use these icons up here. It also is carrying forward a lot of the things you'd expect from the desktop. For example, if I went to save this file, it's going to save like a desktop file. And a lot of mobile apps for the iPad or for Android, things auto save and there's a gallery. There's nothing like that. It works like a traditional you know, file saving type app. And drawing with it is really good. I think the thing that I'm impressed with most, actually, you have to select a color that'll actually show up. Yeah, now drawing with it is really good. I think what impressed me most is that they've squeezed all of this in here, and yet this is still an incredibly good program to draw with. I thought there might be some lag. I thought you might, we might run into some things uh, there. But no, overall, uh, very impressive. Uh, I keep saying that over and over again, but really that that is my first impression here of playing with it. Many of these brush settings are carrying over. Let me see if I can find a pencil with tilt to it and see if that works. I don't know if tilt's going to work or not because I'm not sure which brushes have that sort of thing and which don't. Let's see if you can tilt. I'm not sure if that's tilting or not. Obviously pressure sensitivity is here and if I press harder, the pressure sensitivity is working really well here. Let me undo this stuff so it doesn't get in the way. And if you're wondering, I'm using the Galaxy Tab S6 Lite, which desperately wants to upgrade the software, and so that keeps popping up, I apologize. But I think that's even more impressive that this is not the top of the line Galaxy Tab. This is the inexpensive one, and yet it's still running very well and still performing you know, pretty well, considering this isn't like a high-end you know, Android tablet here. So anyway, we have our tools. This is semi-configurable. So if I want to take something and say, uh, move my layers over here, I can go ahead and do that. I could move that stuff, which is nice. Uh, can I close this? I can, I can shrink things down. One of the things that's been happening to me a lot as I've been drawing is my palm was hitting my tools. And so I've been moving my tools slowly over to the left-hand side so that doesn't happen quite as much, uh, which is which is really nice because I kept changing layers and things like that. In this upper right hand corner, we have the option to change our workspaces. So if I wanted to, uh, now that my layers are over there, I could go ahead and save a new workspace or I could jump in here. Here's my animation workspace. So yes, the animation features made it over here. Big paint, which is kind of a semi-traditional workspace. There's the default, which you're gonna see uh, minimal, which is kind of cool. Actually, I might go with minimal because I'm not really using a whole lot here. But yeah, 
all of those workspaces are there. And as you can see, that seems to be the best way to go about accessing a lot of these settings and different things. In this upper corner, we've got these three dots. And here we have our options like file that can open a new file and save and things like that. View, what does view do? I haven't checked that out yet. So I can show the canvas full screen, soft proofing. Yeah, so different different settings there. I haven't played too much with Krita in that regard. Uh, layer settings, select settings. I wanna go down to uh, my setting settings here. Uh, and here we have options like configure Krita, manage resource, show dockers, all that stuff. I just wanted to jump into the settings so you could see what's going on here. The one thing I haven't tested out is uh, keyboard shortcuts. I don't have a Bluetooth keyboard right now available to me to kind of sync it and test it out. But there are a lot of keyboard shortcuts listed in here, and I wouldn't be surprised if they're not working yet, if they are working in the future, and you could use that with this, which would be hugely helpful. Uh, even some of the iPad apps, when they've been converted and brought over, you lose some of that keyboard functionality and they're building it back in because obviously tablets aren't really designed to be used with keyboards. But if you could get a pro level app that works with a keyboard, this, this will be amazing. But you can go in here and do a lot of things, uh, fiddle with your display if you want. Um, you can change your performance level, how much memory you want to use and that sort of thing. Uh, pressure curve, uh, what else do we have? Author settings, was it in general? Oh, keyboard shortcuts is what I was looking for. Or maybe it was tablet settings. I don't remember. Somewhere it was showing me where you could go in and, and change your keyboard shortcuts. I thought it was here, but I'm not seeing what I was looking at before. It's probably just a slightly different setting here. But it was showing the real, uh, the only real um, things that we have going on here in terms of gestures is that pinch and zoom and that two fingers to pan. Uh, it works pretty well. It, it seems maybe it's a little bit touchy and at times, oops, that flipped, and at times it drags a little bit. But for the most part, I found it to be, honestly, it's more responsive than some Windows tablets I've tested. Uh, so obviously it's working pretty well. The one thing that I have noticed um, is that you definitely want to use this with a pen and you probably want to use this with an active stylus. You're not going to be wanting to use this um, with, with a dumb stylus that lacks some accuracy. If you are inaccurate at all, like your finger using this to select tools is incredibly inaccurate and I'm not sure if it even works at all with your finger or if it's looking for stylus input. But let me jump back to this. The other thing I noticed is Obviously it's brought over the toolbar, so if we wanna scroll through all of these brushes, if I was going to use my finger to do that, it's not even working, but it can get really fidgety because everything is very small. Uh, unfortunately with Android, this is about as big of an Android tablet as you're gonna find. They don't get much bigger than these 10 inch screens. I would love to see something like the size of the 12.9 inch iPad, see this running on something like that. I think having that extra space to work in would be fantastic. But I think once you get used to the kind of growing pains and the tininess of a lot of this stuff, it's, it's going to be far better than many of the other apps that are currently out there for Android in terms of just the depth of features and things that you can do here. You could do anything. So anyway, I just, I just wanted to share that with you guys, show you what's up here, let you know it's available and give you the link. If you have any comments or questions, let me know down below in the comment section and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.